This video is going to be pretty special and I think you're going to like it. I want to thank Fierce PC for sending over these two systems as well as sponsoring the video. And what we're going to do is compare this system which is a Ryzen 7 1700 with an ASUS Crosshair S6 Hero motherboard to this one which is an Intel 7700K with an ASUS Maximus 9 Hero board. So basically the same. They also feature ASUS GTX 1080 Strix cards, I believe 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, uh, a 256 gig SM9 one Samsung M.2 SSD. Uh, we also have a Seagate one terabyte SSHD uh, and a few other bits and pieces. Also Thermaltake uh, View 27 cases and their water 3.0 uh, 240 uh, millimeter liquid cooler. So a pretty decent system. Obviously uh, both systems are basically the same. The only difference being the CPU and the motherboard and the motherboards are basically the same as well. So this is going to be a very interesting comparison. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at the systems. Starting off with the Intel system, we have have the 7700K. That's sitting in an ASUS Maximus 9 Hero board. Obviously a very nice motherboard with nice styling and all that sort of stuff and of course the ASUS Aura Sync which helps with this graphics card with the rather nice blue LEDs that are on the ASUS uh, Strix 1080 so that one is also quite cool. It's a blue theme especially on the Thermaltake Water 3.0 fans as well which is quite cool. So when you do boost it up you'll see the blue of the graphics card as well as the blue on the motherboard and the blue on the fans. So so uh, a very nice overall styling. The case that it's in is the Thermaltake View 27, has some very nice artwork on the front as well. Uh, and overall, it's just a very stylish system. As I said, the SM961256 uh, gig SSD is in here, as well as a Thermaltake 650 watt power supply, I believe, and a Seagate one terabyte SSHD hard drive. Moving on to the AMD system, we have a Ryzen 7 1700. That is technically the lower end of the Ryzen 7 processors. It's still eight core 16 threads, although this one is overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz, which is actually a pretty nice overclock. You also have a 2400 megahertz, a 16 gigs of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. You also have that SM961 SSD as well, and the one terabyte Seagate uh, SSHD hard drive. The ASUS GTX 1080, which is also uh, themed towards the orange, which is actually really cool, as is the motherboard and the fans on the Thermaltake Water 3.0. And again, the, therm uh, the Thermaltake View 27 is also a really nice case, so it's a very interesting artwork on the front too. When it comes to the price, the AMD system is currently running £1,820, give or take about 5p, whereas the Intel system is about £30 more at £1,850, or at least five pence shy of that as well. So that's actually pretty good value for money, especially when you take into account the price of picking the parts yourself and building it. And the fact that this one comes overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz out of the box anyway, that's also not bad. To take a look at the results, as you can see, the 7700K kind of runs away with it at 1080p in all of the titles. At 1440p and 4K though, AMD really does have a pretty good handle on it. In Dirt Rally at 1080p again, the 7700K is a pretty big difference. Although when we get to 1440p and 4K, the AMD chip actually beats out at 4K by full 5 FPS. In GTA 5, I think the 7700K just has better optimization here, as no matter what resolution you're at, the uh, 7700K still beats it, although at 4K, there's only one FPS difference. In Doom running Vulcan, there really isn't a massive difference at 1080p, only 5 FPS here, only 1 FPS at 1440p, and again, only 1 FPS at 4K, so very, very impressive. In Unigen Heaven, again, there's only 5 FPS difference at 1080p, and in 1440p and 4K, AMD just about pips the post here. This is a really impressive result and something to be very proud of if you're AMD. Speaking about temperatures, the AMD system again is really impressive here, beating the Intel 7700K by about 9 degrees, which is a very impressive result. Obviously with the graphics cards being the same card, the temperatures were pretty much identical, but either way, these are very impressive results. So I was actually pleasantly surprised at the outcome of these results. For me, I was expecting from my current test of the 1800X, the 1700 to be a decent bit slower than the 7700K, but especially at 1440p and at 4K, while I understand that those are mostly GPU bottleneck scenarios, I was really impressed to see that they're basically the same, if not maybe one or two FPS slower on the AMD side. Even at 1080p, it still wasn't a massive gap, and at 3.8 GHz it did a pretty good job of keeping up, and considering that this is also 8 core 16 threads, if you are planning on doing anything else on top of gaming, the AMD 
release system is actually a pretty good shout and it's also £30 cheaper. Now if you are planning on purely gaming this one is also a really awesome beast and it's perfectly capable of handling, handling 1440p and 4k games so again a really impressive buy if that's what you're after if you just want gaming then this is the one I'd personally go with whereas if you want to do gaming and other bits and pieces or if you don't mind uh, you know gaming at 4k or 1440p for example then this is also a really good shout. So once again thank you to Fierce PC for making this happen it was a, an awesome experience to be able to test two separate yet identical systems uh, to actually see the performance difference between a specific part uh, that's actually a really nice way to do it and I'm very glad that I got to do it this way so if you enjoyed the video then feel free to let me know in the comments down below go check out Fierce PC in the link that I'll leave down below for these two Imperial Clash systems of course subscribe and share the video if you did enjoy it that's the best thing you can do to help me out uh, and otherwise uh, yeah just want to make it clear both systems actually ship in this configuration with the graphics card in the vertical position we had a little bit of issue shipping this one Fierce PC did a great job of packing it with a whole load of air pack inside the box so that's really impressive but unfortunately this one just didn't quite survive with the PCIe slot here so uh, that is just you know something to be aware of you will get it in this configuration uh, so that is just something to make clear but either way that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed it and found the video useful and informative as I said feel free to share if you've got any questions or comments let me know in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can but otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it thank you to Fierce PC and we'll see you all in the next video